My name is Rafi Media Villa from Criticologos.com. Remy and, and Courtney, thank you for taking the time to talk about the movie and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, um, I, I want to give you props. I, I love, you know, you always, when we see a movie that's going to be divided by chapters, you always have that this, uh, this in the back of your mind. Okay, how is this first chapter going to end? How are they going to leave it? And you know, in order to, you know, to, 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 give you to stay hype for the second one. And I love that this one stands by itself. So it's not, it's not all about, it's not a whole bitch trailer for the second part. It stands by itself. So I wonder, uh, what was it? What were the challenges of, of, of dividing this, sto this story in three, in three movies and uh, instead of just going with one? Uh, Remy, you first. Well, the, uh, it was of course a challenge to in one go shoot three movies, but it was also, an amazing opportunity because instead of telling one 90 minute two hour story you can expand it into a four and a half hour epic odyssey where you can really <laughs> explore the story and the characters in a whole new kind of a way and I'm I'm very glad to hear what you said about the first movie standing on its own of course we we describe it as one gigantic movie that is is broken uh, up into, mm -hmm. into three chapters but we want each movie to also stand on its own, of course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was the goal. Uh, but at the same time, we definitely think that in the end of the first movie, there are a lot of questions unanswered that the audience is dying to learn more about. And that, that's why we offer the, the second and the third movie. And rather than your traditional sequel model, where you make one movie and then a few years later, you make another movie, a sequel and so on. And, the characters change and the settings change and everything changes. This is really a story that basically takes place in five days with the same characters and you see the psychological change uh, uh, and effects of, of these events, not only in the victims, but also in the perpetrators. And that's what we found uh, to be an incredible, incredible opportunity that you maybe get once in your lifetime as a filmmaker. And I think to add to what Rennie said, because I agree with everything, you know, by the end of the second movie, the stakes are even higher. So if you can believe by the end of the first, you were left there, by the end of the second, you're like, and we're pretty sure you'll be this way, you're like, oh my God, right? And then you're left there. And you know, I think the biggest interesting thing was is because we shot it all at once. Mm -hmm. So it's a giant movie. And then when you're editing it, you get there and you've watched it so many times in the edit, we were like, well, we could end it here, or we could go a little further because it's already shot and we could end it here, or we could rain back and we could end it here. So that's the part that like, it never occurred to me when we endeavored to do it. Oh my God, when we're in the editing room, we actually have those choices because we shot the whole thing at once. We could end it in different places if we wanted to. So that's part of what happens as you sort of mold it in the editing process. Uh, Rennie, you you have done all sorts of gender, you know, actions and 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 horror movies. What aspect of those other projects do you still incorporate into this project that, that people can see? Hey, this is a a, a, Rennie, a Rennie movie. My goal has always been, whether I'm doing action or horror, is to shoot the movie in a way and put it together in a way where the audience feels like they are in the movie, that they are in for the ride and they can relate to the characters and feel what the characters are, are feeling and, and really be in the, in the movie theater, holding onto the seat, uh, having those moments when you jump out of your seat and, and so on, but never, uh, never cheating, never, never just going boo to the audience because you <laughs> can do that with music or sound or visuals, but, but especially with, with the strangers, we want it to be always very honest to this genre of horror movie, which is realistic horror. We wanted to, to create a situation that any audience member could relate to and feel like that could happen to you anytime, anywhere. And, and that was the goal. And taking, taking what we've uh, learned in making different types of movies in different types of genres, doing it with the visuals, doing it with the sound, doing it with the music, and really putting the audience uh, in the driver's seat. That's the biggest goal. 
At one final question before I let you guys go. Um, this is a this is a very reimagined version of some of other of of, of similar films. What uh, what's that, what stands out from this version besides from the uh, compared to the others? Uh, Bernie, you first. Well, first of all, obviously there was the original The Strangers, mm -hmm. 2008, 16 <laughs> years ago. We didn't want to make a remake or a sequel to that. We wanted to reimagine The Strangers mm -hmm. universe and wanted to do this really bigger than life story that is four and a half hours long and really examines the victims and the killers. And uh, then we broke it up into three chapters. And what's special about the first movie is that it sets up the situation. There's a couple on a cross-country trip across the uh, United States. They go to a little town, they go to an Airbnb, and there's a home invasion. And we wanted to give certain touchstones that the audience can relate to if they've seen the original film 16 years ago. So they feel like, okay, this is called The Strangers for that reason. But at the same time, we wanted to create our own movie and our own three movies. And the, the first movie sets everything up and it's incredibly frightening because you are introduced this to this completely senseless sense of violence and dread. And then the second movie takes us to, to a, another step further. And then the third movie really wraps it up and, and grows in, in epic proportions compared to the first movie. So you kind of have to see all of them, them <laughs> eventually, hopefully together. Maybe when all the movies have come out, uh, our dream is to put them all together and have people come and see a four and a half hour horror, horror odyssey. That's awesome. Corny, anything you want to add? Yeah, I, I would just add, I mean, everything Rennie said, absolutely. And I would just add that from the original 2008 Strangers, our, they created something which became iconic in itself and became something that people were really truly terrified by. And so our goal wasn't to remake that. Our, our first chapter, if you want to call it, the first act of our large script, if you want to call it, we thought to ourselves, how are we going to ever, like, you know, we have to service our own thing, but the setup was so good. And the story we want to tell goes so far beyond and really gets into both the characters of the protagonist and the antagonist in a much deeper way. But, you know, we wanted to reimagine that but we wanted to make sure that we honored the great parts of it that everybody loves so we could tell the bigger story we wanted to tell. And that was literally like, you know, a goal. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I feel like we did that. And then when people go into the second part and the third part, they're going to be like, oh, shit, I'm so glad they started there. Uh, guys, thank you once again. Congratulations on the movie, and, and I, yeah, the the ending, how you see the credit scene, just just get, get, got me like I want to see more right now. I don't get to wait. So congratulations. Well, just wait a few months, and you yeah, will. we're gonna bring it to you quick. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you so much. Thank you.